All right, so here is um, a short video, some tips on how to pack with the rooster hen house. Um, so always starting with obviously disassembly. Um, so as I pack, just to kind of show you what that looks like. So I use pipe insulation and these guys are uh, small Velcro, you find them in the electrical department of home improvement stores. I believe they're called um, Velcro ties because they're made to fasten cords and um, you know things like that. So um, they're just reusable Velcro and you wrap them around obviously various parts of the frame that you want to protect. So um, this is just how I pack it. You can kind of get a good look here. So the, the derailleur, I always take the, if you look here, I take the hanger off so it's not left exposed so it doesn't get bent. And then it goes in the bag here, which I don't flip around side to side. It rotates underneath down inside the frame so that we aren't twisting anything or leveraging the chain or anything. Um, it just kind of tucks nicely in there. And then I have these plastic braces that you can find. Um, here's the other one. Here's for the front fork. Just plastic braces. You can get those at any bike shop um, just to make sure your dropouts don't get squished um, and your frame cracks. And then so you can kind of see how that works. This is just a folded over piece of cardboard, um, double double p cardboard here to give the um, chain ring a little extra protection. And then using the bigger straps here and here, um, here and here to um, lock in all the various components. So you can see it's, it's one single unit. So as I pick it up, I can move it around and tuck it in the bag. Um, and that's how it tucks in. So the, um, if you look here, so if this is, this is all clean. This is where the bearing goes for the, uh, the neck, where the fork goes through the frame. These are all clean. So I wipe those down every time uh, you take it apart. Good chance to keep that clean and operating properly. Um, that's pretty much the gist of the frame. Take a towel with you and leave it in your bag. Uh, this can obviously serve as a, as a beach towel, kind of doubles up, but um, it's good to have somewhere to set your bike down in case you're building your bike in a parking lot, on the hotel room floor, um, wherever it may be. And then wheels. Um, this is a cassette cover. Again, you can get it for free at a bike shop. They usually have a few of these laying around. Just just protects the teeth of the cassette. Tires uh, deflated about half um, before you pack them away. And then they slot right here in the wheel bag. Um, I don't put any caps or anything like that because it just takes up more width. Um, and I've had good experience not even worrying about that. So they slot right into the wheel bag and then you can put whatever you want. Um, I tend to put my toiletries in there as well as my food. Um, or if I'm traveling personally for a race, I'll bring my wetsuit and the wetsuit can go in there as well. And you can kind of pack this full because it's really light. So lots of stuff can go in there. Um, and then I have the old school rooster, so it, my rooster hen house slots in, so it drops in, it doesn't fold open, um, but plenty of room to fit things in there too. So let's talk about some of the other things that um, I put in. So this is just a drawstring bag, so all of this goes inside that drawstring bag. Um, and then uh, with the exception of the pump, that goes separately. But that all fits inside the drawstring bag, which I put in the frame bag um, because there's plenty of room in there. And I also put put that because it's kind of heavier, I put it close to the wheels. So the, the fulcrum, so I, where I grab it, it's not really heavy. So I don't put it up here because that means I'm lifting the weight as opposed to down here by the wheels. Keeps it a little bit lighter. So let's talk about some of the things that um, I bring with me. So... Um, in that, inside that drawstring bag, uh, I have an ass saver, um, which if you're not familiar with what that is, it just clips into the saddle in case you have a, a rainy um, course familiarization or something like that. It can keep your um, kit from getting too dirty. And <laughs> here are, I have a little headlight and a tail light. Um, so uh, occasionally we like to do kind of uh, pre-dawn rides um, when the roads are quiet. So it's a good chance to get on the course without too much traffic and that can be good for safety. Um, I take my stem off of my bike, obviously, and it goes just in the drawstring bag. This is uh, my um, uh, just my saddle bag, but the CO2 has been taken out, and I always ride with a frame pump in case I double flat, but in this case, um, I don't have CO2, so that would need to go back on the frame when I arrive at the location. Some extra Velcro ties here. I always bring a, a cleaning kit too. Um, again, let's say you have a rainy rain, uh, race familiarization where well, you don't want to ride on a dirty, um, you know, dry, 
chain or drivetrain. Um, so bring just some small supplies. So this is just wet, the wet uh, lube that I use, WD-40. A small brush you can pick up at any auto parts store or Walmart or whatever it may be. This is for scrubbing the chain. And then this is a small travel size container of car wash soap. This is Simple Green and a travel size pump sprayer. And this is TriFlow, the travel size. And then you see that little tube there too. So I use WD-40 on the chain. I use TriFlow everywhere else on bushings, bearings, things like that. Or not bearings, sorry, I use grease on bearings. Um, but just for like various, you know, uh, brake bushings, um, you know, various places that need some lubrication. Uh, pedals, I pack those away separately in the drawstring bag as well. A spare inner tube, in case you get a, a, an extra flat or a double flat. A uh, spare derailleur hanger, in case your derailleur hanger gets bent, you can throw that on. Uh, baby powder, because I like to talc them, uh, the tubes, before I install them. Some spare equipment, we've got tire levers, a spare seat collar, um, electrical tape, sandpaper to sand down glazed over brake pads so you aren't the squeaky guy on the course. Um, uh, this is a, um, a spoke wrench in case your wheels get untrue or out of line. You can kind of, you know, I don't have a truing stand, but you can get them close. And then spare bar end plugs as well. Um, and that's it in that bag. Um, Allen wrenches for obvious reasons. So this is just a standard set. My bike requires a four mil and a five mil. Um, my uh, Garmin mount is, I think, a three mil or three and a half mil. And then my pedals require the eight mil, so I bring that in separately. Um, this is a screwdriver for adjusting derailleurs um, or whatever else Phillips heads are on there. A spare, um, a trainer skewer. So in case there's a trainer at the venue, you may want to use that. Um, or just a spare skewer in case something happens. This is a pill bottle filled with grease. Um, so when I mentioned the frame here, so these are all dry, you have to re-grease the bearings. Um, and then, so here, I left the bearings on the neck. So I would re-grease these, re-grease here, and then reinstall the fork. Um, and that's, and also, uh, good note here too, I just kind of figured out this is a really good place to install the fork right along the down tube. Um, keeps it tucked in nice and cozy and protected as well. So that's the grease that I use to reinstall the headset bearings. And this is um, carbon paste. Um, or carbon lube, whatever you want to call it, a spare container here, and this is just a pill bottle full of that um, for using on the seat post, and if you have carbon handlebars, you'd want to use that there too. And then uh, the Ziploc bag that all of these parts go into. Um, this is a, I just keep this as a wash rag, a clean wash rag, in case I want to wash the frame down. And if you're traveling to a place that doesn't um, have a spigot or anything like that, you can use um, a shower um, or you can just fill up your water bottle with water and just squirt it over the bike or the drivetrain. And I've done that and, and it tends to work pretty well. And then here is the torque wrench that I use. So my torque wrench has um, various settings. It's a, the Spin Doctor brand. So I can adjust the torque and then obviously it has all the heads that I need um, for myself as well as for athletes. Um, this is the pump that I like to use. Um, it's, it's a really nice pump with a pressure gauge on it and I've retrofitted it with a longer hose and a different valve that I prefer. Um, but I found recently, this is the Turbo Morph and this is the smallest pump I found that still works well because it has a pressure gauge that actually works well. They have smaller pumps in this and the pressure gauge is in line, but it tends to not work very well. So I got this for, I think like $35 online. Um, so pretty inexpensive. This one's a better pump, but more expensive. Um, I think either works fine. Um, and lately I've been packing this in my uh, coach's backpack um, just to have on venue. Um, so I think athletes could travel with that and have it work well. Um, so that is kind of an overview of how I pack up um, my bike and all the various traveling essentials in the hen house. Let me know if that uh, creates any more questions or um, if I can provide any more advice. Oh, last thing, when you go to the airport, uh, so kind of getting around the airport fees, I always, if curbside is available, I always go curbside and then I offer, um, I just literally, when I walk up, I hand, uh, the attendant a $5 bill and my driver's license. So that way they know you're taking care of them from a tip and, um, they're not typically employees. So you gotta be on the lookout for that. If they are, um, airline employees, there's no difference between doing curbside and, um, being inside, but most of the time curbside, they are an independent company, not airline employees. They don't really care if they're charging you an oversized fee. Um, and if they ask, is it a bike? I always say, yes, it is, but technically it's bike parts because it's broken down to meet the baggage requirements. And that's my answer. Um, and to this date, I've only been charged, um, twice, both times out of United, United out of Denver. 
Um, and actually for this past weekend, I got charged out of Denver on Southwest, um, but they reimbursed me the fee um, upon submitting a, a customer claim. So um, to date, I've only been charged twice and that's probably going on four years, three or four years now. Um, probably maybe 30 trips um, without charge. So that's it. Um, let me know if you have questions.